Hey, what's up? I'm Mark, and welcome to Lifestyle Savant. In today's world, in the world of the internet, standing out in a crowd is extremely challenging. One of the greatest parts about the internet is that everyone can play, but that's also the greatest weakness. Everyone can play. You have to stand out. Your images have to be vibrant, popping. They have to capture people's attention. Video is the king. Moving images is absolutely the king. One of the most uh, awesome softwares that you can use is a, is a software called Plotiverse. This is an innovative software that allows you to convert still photos into moving images. If you want to learn this technology, I'm going to take you step by step through my process to create beautiful moving images that are going to stop people from scrolling. Let's get right into it. All right, so this is a three-step process. The first step we're going to take to uh, make movement out of our pictures and put them onto a social media platform or uh, some sort of website is we're going to start in an app called Canva. You can see that here on the top left-hand side. Let's open it up. This is a really awesome app. It's totally free um, to start. There are some additional add-ons you can buy um, for the base model. It's essentially free. So um, I'll let you guys kind of browse this on your own time. But on the bottom right hand corner, you're going to see here this plus sign. And we're going to create a new app, a new post. So depending on the platform that you want to make your post on, um, you're just kind of going to scroll through here and, and pick the appropriate size. Um, I think that for most Instagram and Facebook posts, if you want to, your goal here is to take up as much of the screen as possible. Um, so we're going to choose the square size. Okay. So we're going to start here. Um, now that we've started creating this, we're just going to simply tap on here and you can go into your gallery and, and find the image that you want to uh, turn into motion, turn into motion. So let's, uh, let's take this one. For example, I typically recommend using photos that have uh, water or clouds um, these tend to make for really compelling moving images. All right. So we've got our image here. You might, you know, you might also want to add something here. We hit the bottom right hand plus sign. Might want to add some text to this photo. Um, I mean, we could add anything here. Let's add, uh, let's just add the name, uh, life style savant. All right. And we can kind of enlarge this a little bit. Um, down here, you can see that there's different options. We can bold it. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick a different font. Let's say this is a font that I really like. Uh, where is it? <clears throat> Atma Bold. I kind of have a, I kind of like this one. It's kind of fun, but uh, it's it's kind of a cool font. I like this font. Uh, you can also see that you can choose different colors for it. Um, let's go with you. You really want something that pops. I'm just going to use black for this, for this example. All right, so now we've got our photo. Uh, again, you can move this all over the place, um, but you've got your photo in here. Uh, the next step uh, is going to quickly save it. And you can see on the top right-hand corner, uh, there's a little arrow with a down, uh, with a line underneath it. We're going to click that. We're saved. Boom. We're good. All right. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to close out of Canva because what we've done is we've created our picture and we've saved it in the correct format. So now we're gonna go into this top uh, middle app called Plot Averse. And now this is where the magic happens, okay? Um, this is where the magic happens. So um, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll down here to the very bottom center, there's a big plus sign. And we are going to create a plot graph, okay? Create a plot graph. And you can see here that um, you have the option of choosing images and from all sorts of places. Uh, if you don't see the exact image here right away, you might have to choose a different um, file type. You know, you can find them from inside your gallery, your Dropbox, your Google Drive, all over the place. Um, but in this case, because we've been using, we used Canva to create our uh, format, that's where our image is at. So we're gonna click on that and it is going to open up plot averse. We're just gonna give it a second here to look, to load. I will also mention that Plotiverse is free to use, um, although you can pay for some additional add-ons, okay, additional features. So here in Plotiverse, uh, at the bottom left-hand so side of the screen here, you're going to see um, there are three main options, Animate, Mask, and Anchor. So I'm going to start with Mask. I'm going to kind of go through here real quick. What this does is going to create almost like a shield. It's, it's uh, in the graphic design 
world we call this what's this is what's called a um clipping mask of sorts and, and what it does is it kind of basically it it lets the software know that we do not want to alter this this is a separate mask on top we do not want to alter this um you can see you can erase and and kind of get this really uh tight here you want to get it as tight as possible um when you're creating this but you definitely don't want to leave oops you definitely don't want to leave any of the edges exposed because that'll um, mess up what we're trying to do here so this is pretty close it's pretty tight i mean you know you probably want to clean this up if it's going to be a very professional looking post but now that we've um kind of masked out we don't want um uh, the lifestyle savant here to move we're gonna hit the checkbox in the top right hand corner okay now we've got a clipping mask uh the second part here is the animate feature you can click on the bottom left now um, using two fingers we can kind of enlarge this a little bit and the effect i'm going to look for here is i want to have the water look like it's it's moving downward so i'm just going to take my finger place it where i want the start to be and then just move it down all right um and you know again you, you have to play with this a little bit but um, again, what we're looking to do here is just make the water appear to be moving down just like the ocean normally would. Um, now let's hit play and let me show you what's going to happen here. Now you can see the ocean's moving, but whoa, everyone, everything else is moving. It's not just the waves moving, the sky is moving, the trees are moving. So what we need to do here is we need to take an extra step and we need to anchor it. Okay. Now basically what the anchor is going to do is again, much like the clipping mask is going to say, Hey, we don't want to impact anything that's above this kind of invisible line, kind of like a connect the dots type of thing here. Okay, so we're going to kind of place those down. And we're going to say, hey, we don't want to we don't want to move the leaves. We don't want these impacting the leaves. So we're going to place these anchor points here. All right. <clears throat> um, you'll see. Hey, Mark, uh, you you put a little dot in the middle there. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the right hand to our select. Select it and delete it. And you can also, by using the select feature, kind of change the way that your movement goes. So if you say, you know what, I don't want this going quite like that, or we can kind of move this around. So again, the select feature is another way of kind of altering this. So now that we've set up our uh, anchor points, let's hit the play again and see what that looks like. So it's definitely looking better, um, but you can still see some distortion, particularly over here on the right-hand side. So we're, we want to kind of clean up that anchor spot there. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to select it, boom, delete it. Let's try to see if we can't clean that up a little bit. All right. Let's see if that looks better. Yeah, it looks better. It's looking pretty good there. But, uh, yeah, you can see again, this is just a matter of kind of playing with it playing with the anchor spots. The more practice you get in here, the better you're going to get at kind of seeing where your anchor point should be. And you can see, wow, it's, it's, it's looking cool there. It's looking pretty interesting. Let's take it a step further. And we are going to add some more animations here. We want these clouds to kind of move too, which will be kind of a neat effect. I love clouds. Now, there's not a whole lot of clouds in this particular image, but clouds in general just make for some cool effects. Um, let's also see if maybe we can't make these palm branches move like they're moving in the wind, kind of. Just It's going to kind of give us a little bit of magic. Okay. And, yeah, again, we're just kind of playing... The longer these arrows are, the more movement you're going to see. Um, and we're going to add a few more anchor points here. Boom. 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 And we're going to go over here and add a few more anchor points. All right. Again, we don't have to set anchor points around the actual person here, the lifestyle savant, because we've already made a clipping mask out of him. So let's hit play. Let's see how that looks now. This is looking pretty cool, but you can see a couple different issues here. Um, a, um, the water here is kind of getting mixed in with the, the sky. 
and then B lifestyle savant itself is kind of moving and getting kind of blurry and so we want to clean that up a little bit. So again, we're going to set some more anchor points. Boom, 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 boom. That should help the program to realize that, Hey, we don't want lifestyle savant to move. And then we need to kind of clean up some of these anchor points here. Maybe the other one here and one here. All right. Now, again, I just kind of made this real quick. You can spend a lot more time kind of playing with this and moving, moving it around. But for our, for our purposes here, I'm, I'm content. I'm pleased. This looks good. So we're going to go ahead and, oh, again, you can also speed up the movement if you want to be more dramatic. Or you can kind of slow it down to be more kind of slow and natural. It's just kind of up to you and, and how you want to create it. I recommend going a little bit faster um, as it's more noticeable. You, your goal here is to stop someone's thumb from scrolling down. So you want it to be probably pretty quick in its movement. Maybe not too fast, but we'll kind of go with something like this. Something like... <laughs> Look that. All right. So now we're 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 good here. Um, at the top right hand corner, we're going to upload this to um, via custom our custom option here. Um, if you pay a small fee, you can um, avoid watermarks. What we're going to do here is we're just going to play a quick add to avoid the watermarks, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> All right. Now that our ad is done, uh, we're going to export bottom center. And you get this little message here. It's saying, hey, just give us a second while we upload it to your phone. All right. So we are uploading, uploading, uploading. Back to our home screen. So we've, again, just to kind of quick recap. First app we used was Canva to correct the correct size of our image. Second app we used was Plotiverse to an, allow us to add motion to our image. The third app we're going to use here, which again is free, uh, is called Kine Master. Again, free to use, um, although you may end up um, spending a little bit of money to um, get some of the extra features. So what we're going to do here in this case is in the left corner, you're going to see a big circle. We're going to click that button because we are going to create a new video. Okay. Um, for uh, this size, we're going to be using the square one by one. If you were making like an Instagram story, you'd probably be using nine by 16. 16 by nine is great for YouTube. Um, but for the purpose of social media and taking up as much real estate space as possible, you probably want to use the, the nine by 16 or one by one. In this case, we're using one by one. It's an Instagram post. All right. So here we are on uh, the Kind Master main screen. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to click, click the media button here on the right hand side, just above the record media. All right. And we are going to find this image from the download section. Okay. And okay, here's our image. We've clicked download. So let's hit the enter button and see what we got here. So here's our image. Let's hit play. Perfect. Perfect. So I just want to recap. The reason that we need to take this final step with Kind Master is because if you were to post that this little clip on your channel, it would go for one second and it would be done. And it wouldn't be able to capture people's attention. It would go for one second and be done. It just looks awkward. So the reason we need to use Kind Master is because we need to loop the video. Or in this case, uh, we're going to make multiple versions. So again, we've got our initial one second clip in here. Let's go back to our media again. And we're going to find more copies and we're just going to keep clicking it. Boom, boom. You can see every time I hit the image or the video, it's going to create another part in this in this loop. So I think that for most um, Instagram videos, you want to be at about 15 seconds. So we're just going to keep clicking until we get to that 15 second mark. And you can see that pretty clearly there. Um, now, if we enlarge it here, now when we hit play, you're going to be able to see it not only in its initial, but it's going to continue to loop over and over and over up to 15 seconds. Pretty sweet, right? So, all right, let's go ahead and let's pause this. And we're going to hit this button in the top right hand corner to kind of save it, go back to our home screen. And, uh, Again, here's just kind of a grid of some of the videos that I've made, um, but we're going to click on this top left. This is the most recent, and we're going to export these three little dots next to each other that are linked by a line. We're going to click that for the export, and then export. All right, so we are almost done exporting here. Perfect. 
Perfect. Okay, cool. So we're exported. Now we're going to go back to our home screen. It's, you know, job's done. Back to our home screen here. And you open up your gallery um, and you go to your uh, export section here. You're going to see a beautiful video. Here's a video that we just made. Um, now, again, you could do a lot. You could do basically anything with it at this point. Um, being as we've saved it in a one by one format, it's gonna be perfect for a software um, like Instagram or Facebook, uh, even Twitter. Although Twitter is gonna be a little bit wider, but um, in this case, what we're gonna do here is we've got our 50 second video. We're going to log into Instagram. All right, and we are going to create a new post, and voila, here is our post ready to go. I hope this, this little video gave you a good introduction into how to use Plotiverse and uh, hopefully you can make some awesome images. Please hit me up in the future. I'd love to help you with your next project. In the meantime, have a great day. Uh, give me a like, share, or again, give me a comment if there's anything you have a question about. Have a great day and happy creating. Peace.